Hi, everybody. Welcome to Judy J TV. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, I just want to do a quick vlog about how I started dating a girl. Everybody's always asking me, like, since when did you become gay? I didn't know you were gay or like, are you gay <laughs> or whatever happened to you and so-and-so, you know, ex-boyfriends and stuff. And I quickly want to just touch on the fact that no, I am not gay. I do not consider myself being 100% gay. Um, I wouldn't even consider myself being bisexual. I would consider myself just being Judy. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's about it. Just being Judy, just Judy. Um, I feel like we live in a time where everybody is so like judgmental or trying to put labels and titles on people, whether it be their gender, whether it be their ethnicity, race, nationality, whether it be their sexual orientation, what they're attracted to, whatever. And me, I consider myself a very free spirit. Um, I messed around with girls my whole life. Like, actually, my first kiss was with a girl, and I was, like, in kindergarten. So, there you have it. <laughs> um, my first sexual experience with a girl, like, besides kissing and drunk kissing and just party girl stuff, um, was my freshman year in college. Uh, me and my boyfriend, I actually cheated. Whoops. I'm not a cheater, though. I actually, when I'm in love, I'm, like totally in love head over heels clingy annoying all of that but i'm dope but no nah, i did I, I cheated on my boyfriend at the time um what i was like 19 um he was my high school you know sweetheart we left high school um still together but when we went to college he went to university of illinois and i went to columbia college chicago so we were like two and a half hours away which doesn't justify anything that i did but for the first time ever, well, not the first time, but I'm a blame it on the al 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 alcohol. Because seriously, that's the first time I ever drank sangria. Um, you know, I've always turned up, drank, you know, partied or whatever. Me and my girl threw like the best parties uh, in high school and college. Literally, my parties were everything. If you weren't at my party, you weren't anything okay you weren't anybody um my mother used to go upstairs and lock herself in her room and i used to throw the most bomb parties whether it be for christmas or halloween and then in college we kicked it up a notch because we had our own places so we really would like it was cracking it i mean i've had parties called get slapped judy style like i mean it was lit okay but even though i've always been lit in college Freshman year was the first time I got lit off of wine, sangria. You guys are asleep if you guys never got wine drunk, okay? Wine drunk is actually all I do now. I cut hard alcohol out. Sometimes I drink it occasionally, but I mostly love my beer and wine. Those hangovers hurt now. I'm 30 and they hurt. I can't even believe like I used to drink all night to like 7 a.m., sleep a little while and do it again. Like it was so lit. But um, no, nah, seriously, wine drunk is where it's at now for real. Um, and especially I just came back from Spain. I had a real sangria, like the real sangria, which is completely different from here in the States. But anyway, this video isn't about like what I like to drink. Only Judy. But um, this is about you know, how I got in a relationship with my girlfriend. But anyway, like I was saying, um, in college, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, slipped up my freshman year, got drunk on some sangria, and I had my first sexual experience with a woman. She was older than me. She was a few years older than me, um, like in her late 20s, I believe. Beautiful girl. And that was definitely my first um, sexual experience. Like, she ate me out. I ate her out. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But no shades of her sex or whatever. But my bitch, ain't nobody got nothing on her. <laughs> no, but seriously, I used to always think like, oh, my God, don't you need a guy? Like, how does lesbians have sex? But it's definitely possible and sometimes 
more better than what a guy can give you. But yes, me, I'm sexually fluid. I don't really go by titles. I don't consider myself gay, bisexual, none of that. I'm just a free spirit, um, an indigo child. And whoever I love, whatever I love is what I love. You know what I'm saying? I'm, now, I'm not going to be out here fucking horses or anything. Like, no, stop it. There's a lot of weirdos out here. No. But as far as like male or females, whoever makes me happy and you know what I'm saying? Whoever loves me and whoever I fall for because you know I'm a Pisces. So when we love, we love hard, okay? We're the best. But um, yeah, so I really don't care. I don't look at stuff like that, race, gender, any of that, to be honest. Um, I've, I've loved white guys before, you know what I'm saying? And uh, y'all saw my bad girls love, all I liked was dark skin niggas with pretty smiles, you know what I'm saying? So literally, I have no bias towards anybody at all. Race, gender, sex, ethnicity, nationality, mm, religious beliefs, anything. Like, I'm not going to go around dating a Satanist, but... You know, I'm, I was raised Catholic, um, but I'm more spiritual now. Very, very spiritual. Um, not really religious at all anymore. So, but anyway, um, yeah, this video is about how I got with my girlfriend. So when my mother passed away, well, before she passed away, um, my mother passed away from lung cancer. So if anybody had the unfortunate circumstances of seeing your a loved one or somebody that you love slowly pass away from such a horrible de disease like cancer um my mom passed away from lung cancer it started turning into bone cancer or it was bone cancer and started turning into lung cancer it was cancer it was horrible i fought you know two cancerous tumors in my life um literally <clears throat> my first book food till death do us part all of the proceeds go to lung cancer awareness because I'm very passionate about that. I'm also in partnership with PETA. I love animals. I just try to really do the best I can as a human being while I'm here on this earth during this time. Um, but when my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer, it was October of 2014. And literally, I didn't tell anybody about it. I'm usually really vocal and talk about everything on social media. But this, this, what was happening in my life, my dad was sick. Um, he, he was slowing, slowly passing away um, from kidney failure. And then my mom got sick and diagnosed with lung cancer. It was a very delicate time in my life. And at the same time that I was going through this, like cl behind closed doors, um, because, you know, I didn't want people to be like, oh, I'm praying for you. I'm so sorry. You know, that's just not stuff you want to hear because I had so much faith that my parents were going to be here still. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm praying for you. It's kind of like a death sentence already. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't ready to hear that. And then there's the idiots online who are so rude and disrespectful because they're miserable, literally just faceless assholes who sit behind a screen um, bothering people who have a life all day. It's disgusting. But I didn't want to deal with, you know, ignorant and rude people like that because people can throw stones, you know, on social media, hiding behind fake pages and stuff. But those same people would never do it to my face. And I put that on everything. Nobody would do I slept the shit out of you, dog. And that's on that's on everything. But anyway, <laughs> positive vibes only for real. But I'm just saying, don't get it twisted, shy town bitch. Always, always, always. Woo 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 woo. Um, but Yo, so I just, you know, I didn't want to put that business out there. I wanted to deal with it personally with my loved ones and my family, you know, but um, it, the timing really was horrible. I mean, when is the right time to be losing both of your parents? But it was also when season 13 was airing and that wasn't the best season for me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like all of that toxic nonsense, you know, that I was dealing with on top of my personal life. You know what I'm saying? You never really know what somebody is going through. That's why I try to be nice to everybody because everybody has a story and you don't know what's going on. You don't know where that person has come from. You don't know what the, they've been through. Always try to judge somebody off of um, why they did something versus what they did. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a gem. Pick it up. Put it in your pocket. Keep it. I always drop them. Okay? Wake up. But... So my mother was passing away from lung cancer. My dad was sick as well. And my girlfriend came into my life. Um... We have mutual friends, but she really helped everything 
just be easier for me. Um, she was pursuing me, but we weren't together yet. But I, I could tell, like, you know, because she would bring me roses and we would go out to dinner dates and stuff. And I told my cousin Mark, I'm like, I think she likes me, likes me. She, he was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, lesbian, relate, the lesbian neighborhood, you know, they all be cool. You know what I'm saying? He's so funny. My cousin Mark is hilarious. Um, if you guys haven't seen him on my snap in the past or whatever, maybe I'll do like a video or something next time we link up, but he is literally the funniest guy alive. Like seriously, like my cousin Mark is so funny. Um, but yeah, so, you know, she, she was pursuing me and, you know, at first it was just a really good friendship. Um, and my mother, you know, she was very sweet and kind to my mom, um, and my dad, you know, she was there through everything. She went to my dad's memorial. She also was, of course, at my mom's memorial. She took me on this beautiful little trip to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, which is really close to Chicago, like two hours away, but I really needed that getaway. Um, she, she helped me pack my house up, like, mind you, my mom's house, fully furnished, four bedroom, three story house. It was a lot, you know, thank God, you know, some of my family helped as well. But me as an only child, I had to deal with like a lot of stuff by myself. Really nobody really understands or can even grasp, grasp that. So when people always are bringing up like my past and talking about how I was like in my early twenties on a television show when I was getting paid to like have fun and party and stuff is, it's just distasteful. And it actually is pathetic because it just shows you like they're not anywhere new in their life. So, you know what I'm saying? All they can do is talk about the old you and who you used to be because they're still the old them. You know what I'm saying? They're the type of niggas who be like new year, new me. And it's like the same picture, like 2016, 2017, 2018. 2019, 2020, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're steady thinking these niggas finna change. They keep saying new year, new them, but it's still the same nigga. So yeah, no, stay over there. But anyway, um, you know what I'm saying? Just, and even my mom loved her, you know, she told her to take care of me. And she also told me to take care of her. Um, I think my mom really knew what was going on. You know, she knew Ashley liked me. Um, and, you know, my mom is so cool and down to earth. Like, she she really was. My mom was everything. Um, the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Like, for real. She, she pulls her car over to the side of the roads and get, like, animals off the side of the road who've been hit by cars and just stuff like that and would take them to the Humane Society. That's why I'm with PETA and partnership with PETA because I love animals just like my mom so much. But anyway, you know... Um, Slowly but surely, I started falling for her. You know what I'm saying? I started realizing, like, these aren't feelings that I would have for, like, a normal girlfriend. Like, I mean, a normal female friend, like a homegirl. These are feelings I would have for somebody that I really care about. I started getting jealous about where she at, who is she hanging with, you know what I'm saying? And before I knew it, <clears throat> we were girlfriend and girlfriend. Um, yeah, sometimes God puts people in your life. And you really got to recognize that that is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody that you cross paths with, you cross paths with them for a reason. You know what I'm saying? You may not realize that reason right away. You may not realize it going through it. Sometimes you're going to realize what significance that person had in your life way after it's, it's gone and over and done with, you know, and you think back and reminisce. Like life is, you live and you learn. You know what I'm saying? But I love my girl and um she's literally been the best person to me nobody is perfect i'm not perfect and it took a very strong type of person to deal with me literally at the worst time of my life like i was horrible i treated people like shit because i was hurt hurt people hurt people um i said a lot of rude ignorant stuff to people because i wasn't at my best i wasn't happy um there was a time where i was very bitter i didn't understand you know why me why me but then you have to realize why not me you know what i'm saying god gives his strongest test to the strongest soldiers you know what i'm saying and i've been through a lot i you know you see my tumor scar you know that's what the 11 11 is for the universe had other plans for me i fought two cancerous tumors um I'm, I'm strong. You know what I'm saying? People are always like, oh, she's weak. She, eh. Like, no, bitch. I'm strong as fuck and stronger than you. I guarantee you some of the stuff I've been through, you wouldn't even be able to walk in my shoes. You would have folded. But I got Chicago all up in me, so I never, ever fold. Okay. But um, 
No, seriously, that's really how me and my girlfriend got together. She was my shoulder, my rock. She made sure I ate. She brought me cardboard boxes to help me pack up my house. Um, she helped me, you know, move down here to Atlanta from Chicago, took that ride with me and everything was with me when the moving guys were packing up my whole childhood. You know what I'm saying? It really took a strong individual to be able to love me when I wasn't so lovable. Um, and I'd be the first to say that I was horrible. You know what I'm saying? I was hurt. I was hurting. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like people can't understand until they go through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, for, for instance, I, I can't understand like growing up in the hood and, um, you know what I'm saying? Like coming from nothing and, you know, um, uh, needing to eat, like having a hungry, like a hungry, you know, like a drive or whatever, because I, I literally was blessed and privileged. Thank you. I'm thankful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking down on anybody at all, but it's different. You know, we have different stories and different experiences that we go through where somebody was struggling to eat and living in poverty. I was struggling with health. You know what I'm saying? And wondering if I was even going to live, you know what I'm saying? So everybody has a different story. Don't judge. It's different devils, different levels, but still the same battle. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hop on and let you guys know, you know, how I started dating a girl. Everybody's always asking me like, are you gay? I never knew you were gay because I was on love games, dating a whole bunch of niggas. And one of them I actually had like a real relationship with, you know what I'm saying? But as I said, I'm, I'm gender fluid. I'm sexually fluid. I don't even know like the, the right term. I don't think gender fluid was it. Um, I was born a woman. I'm definitely a woman. I'm a hundred percent a woman. Okay. Facts. Um, but I, I just, I'm a free spirit. You know what I'm saying? I don't judge. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to date her because she's a girl. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm not going to date him because he's white. You know, like, nah, I'm a free spirit. Um, I love everybody. <clears throat> and that's really how me and my girlfriend, you know, got together. I was at my lowest point, rock bottom. And she cared about me more than I cared about myself. She helped me quit smoking cigarettes too. I used to be in her car smoking Newport shorts. Okay. <laughs> Thinking that was cute. Teeth getting more yellow by the minute, baby. She was like, oh, let that shit go. And I did. I don't smoke anymore. It, it had a lot to do with her influence on me. Um, she also motivated me to get back in school and just knock it out. I only have like a year left. You know what I'm saying? So she's been nothing but a, a inspiration and very positive for me. Um, and I also quit smoking, of course, because I lost my mother to lung cancer. And um, it, it, it was just too much. Like, it's too much. Um but yeah, she really has helped me become a better me in the midst of, you know, obstacles and me growing and, you know, she never judged me for the horrible stuff that I said and did because she knew that I was hurting. And we also have a lot in common from tumors to um, sick parents to being only children. Like literally she's to me like my soulmate, you know, I don't know what's going to happen or where this is going or what's up. But she's also bought me two beautiful diamond rings, a lot of beautiful jewelry. Like she is really like my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like she's everything. And to have a real relationship, you guys have to be friends at first. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, whatever happens, happens, you know, do I want kids? Of course, you know, one day, but I'm so happy where I'm at right now in life. Like I'm finishing school. I'm really focused on my career in radio and broadcast journalism. I love my dog. He's a child in him in himself. You know what I mean? So I'm not like happiness is different for other people. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sitting here like, oh, I want a man. I want to get married and I want my baby. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's so like 1950s and I've never been a conventional type of woman. You know what I'm saying? I've always been a badass. I've always never followed rules. I've always been different and unique and I pride myself in that. So I don't know, but even if I do marry a woman, we can still have kids. Like anything is possible nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but this is where I'm at in my life right now. Um, right now, I'm just really focused on my goals and my growth and my spiritual journey that I'm on right now. Um, I've been embarking on a spiritual journey for many years now. You know what I'm saying? But it's in full motion right now. Um, and I just want to continue to grow with her. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know, like, no, I don't consider myself gay. Um, I don't consider myself anything but a free spirit and me and my girlfriend got together because she was my light 
when there was nothing but darkness. And that's how it goes. And that's who you need. If you're not with somebody who's making you better or like just helping you, motivating you, then that's really not a person that you need in your life. That's not a soul you need in your life. You should be growing. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be stagnant. You know what I'm saying? And no, growth isn't fast. It's not going to happen right away, but you should be making progress. And if you're with somebody and you want to be with that person as a partner, as a life partner, if they're not motivating you or helping you go up and they're only holding you down and dragging you back, it's time to let them go. They're baggage. But yeah, you guys. Um, so that's what it is. So I love you guys, and this has been The Juice with Judy J, and make sure you subscribe and leave me comments. What else do you guys want to know? Because I have a lot of stuff to talk about. I wasn't most talkative in high school, senior year, the yearbook, so I could talk away. That's why I'm a broadcast journalist. All I do is talk. So yeah, let me know. I love you guys. Mwah.